We welcome all of you tonight that have joined us for a perusal of the Word of God. We welcome those who have joined us on live stream also. It's good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. This is our 53rd exposition of the book of Amos. We're drawing to the close of this uh, book. When I've completed this, we'll, we'll go through the book of Jude. And after that, the uh, Gospel of John, which will be an extended series of lessons. Tonight, we're going to be in the ninth chapter of Amos, verses 7 through 9. <clears throat> Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? If not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kephtor, and the Syrians from Kerr, behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful nation, uh, sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, save that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, and yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Amen. <clears throat> This is God talking, of course. Now, ultimately, all sinful influences and people are going to be publicly exposed, judged, and removed, cast into the lake of fire. However, all judgment doesn't tarry. Sometimes God deals with it ahead of time. There have been times when sinners were judged and removed. The greatest of single epoch of this nature was the flood. People don't think much about the flood these days. I don't know that it is denied, but it almost is, it seems to me. Central influence has multiplied and spread over the earth. It took about 1,600 years for it to reach the level it did in Noah's day. But when it did, God judged it, and all flesh died. The only exception were eight souls in the ark and the animals that were there with him. Same thing happened to a whole generation of Israelites. Their only sin was they believed unbelieving men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm? God sent them out in the wilderness and they wandered out there for, in circles mm -hmm. for 40 years till every single one of those people, 20 years and upward, except Joshua and Caleb, till they died. The rest of the people could not get into Canaan until those people died. Mm -hmm. Even the people that weren't, there were, there were about three million people survived the wilderness. There's 600,000, uh, 600,000, about 560, 600, 560, 600,560 that died in the wilderness and uh, 601,000 were born in the wilderness. But the people, including Joshua and Caleb, they couldn't get in till these others got out. Oh, there's something to learn here, let me tell you. We've got a lot of bottlenecks today in the church. A lot of things can't happen because some people are there. Yeah. Mm 
This is just, this is just the way it is. Mm -hmm. May seem hard, but it's the way it is. Now Amos is telling Israel they're going to be removed from the land they were promised. Yeah. Well, I see some theology has a little bit of trouble with this. They don't. They think that once God promises you something, He can't can't take it from you. Well, <laughs> they're going to have to explain this on the day of judgment, and then these people that died in the wilderness are going to rise up. Yeah. See, look, look, look. Our record was here. We got out of Egypt. Uh -huh. We crossed the Red Sea yes. on dry ground. Mm -hmm. We ate manna. We had miraculous water. And we still didn't get in. Oh, oh see, he had a lot of people. Why do you think some people have been Christians for 30, 40, 50 years and got nowhere? Why? Why? I'll tell you why. They don't believe. Either that or faith's not what it's cracked up to be. That's, that's another possibility which I reject. See, unbelief is rampant in the church. Not to be, it's not popular to say so. You say, how can you prove that? By its condition. By its condition. Now Amos is telling the people you're going to be taken captive and carried to another land. This will confirm a word he said earlier, name of 6 7. He said the disobedient people shall be removed. They're going to be taken out of the land. That would be equivalent to being removed from the church. Yeah, that, that would be a quick parallel to that type of situation. Speaking of the removal of Israel, the ten tribes from uh, Canaan, 2 Kings 17 18 says this. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he moved them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. And then they went, a little later, they went into the Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah reminded the people, listen, listen, people today that are professed to be Christians need to be reminded of what God's done to them. Just like, just like the prophet reminded Israel. Here's what he said. I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, when ye, in, when you entered, you defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. Now there are going to be people that God's going to say to them, I brought you out. I delivered you from the kingdom of darkness and the powers of darkness. And I brought you into my church and you defiled it. You made my church a reproach. You divided my church. You represented me as having a people that had just as many problems as the world's got. You know, oh, this is going to happen. Yeah. Believe me, this is going to happen. I'm anxious for it to happen. I'm jealous for God. I'm jealous that God's got a bad reputation because of the church. I'm, I'm jealous about this. That Jesus Christ has got a bad name because of the people who wear it. That's what. That's the same thing as Israel being uprooted from the promised land. It's the same thing as taking away the candlestick of the church, which is what yeah. Jesus told Ephesus to do. If you, if you, that was what they were. They would have been the first church in the fridge there today. Yeah. They couldn't stand false doctrine. They tried them and said they were false prophets. Found they weren't true. They hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Mm -hmm. They. They were punctilious about their opposition to what was not true, but they left their first love. They didn't love Jesus as much as they did at first. Their love for Christ waned. And Jesus said, if you don't repent and do the first works, I'm going to take your candlestick away. You won't be one of my, you won't be one of my churches. Hmm? 
I think that's what's happened in our day. A lot of church doors closed. I think that's actually what happened. Now, I used to be the coordinator of church development at a local institution. And about we averaged about 50 churches a week closed, just of our denomination. 50 a week closed. Had to sell their buildings, buildings. Had to, the few people left had to join up with somebody else. And there's abandoned church buildings more than you'd care to think. There's a lot of it. What's what happened? The candlestick was taken away. That's what happened. All right, that's what's happening to Israel. So we should be able to really pick up on this. Now, it's important that we note how God talks to Israel. This is a people now. He, he brought them up out of Egypt, took them through the Red Sea, brought them up to the borders of the Promised Land. After he sifted the unbelievers out in the wilderness, he took them in. They possessed the land. But then they became corrupt. Yeah. After, after all that, yeah. they really did come out of Egypt. They really did cross the Red Sea. They really did eat manna. They really drank water out of a rock. They really defeated real enemies. But they really grew corrupt. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? What? That word makes me cringe. The Ethiopians. <laughs> These weren't God-fearing people. Yeah. These were heathen people. Mm -hmm. God had no covenant with them. Now he's showing Israel, he's going to show Israel reason with her, how their sin was inexcusable. See, people always, from, from the first sin that was committed, People have tried to excuse it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There's no record that Adam and Eve ever admitted yeah. that they sinned. That's right. I'm, I have confidence that eventually they did, but there's no, there's no record that they ever mm -hmm. admitted that they sinned. Yeah. When God questioned them, Adam said, yeah. the woman that you gave me, she's, she's the one. Mm -hmm. He didn't say I'm the one. That she's what about that, Eve? The devil. Yeah. He, yeah. He's the one. Neither one of them fessed up. Mm -hmm. They set the tone. Man, it's still this way. Mm -hmm. They say, well, it was a mistake. I made a mistake. Made a mistake? Made a mistake? Mm -hmm. They teach people to think this way today. Christian people are taught to think this way. Yeah. You've made mistakes. Made mistakes? Yeah. You mean eating the fruit of that tree was a mistake? It was an act of disobedience. It was not a mistake. So you're like the Ethiopians to me. Some of the other versions say, you're the same to me as the Cushites. That's another name for the Ethiopians. Are you any different from the Ethiopians to me? <laughs> they thought they were. Israel, Israel thought they were different. He said, are, are you? <laughs> You're like the people from Sudan. That's what it's called today. How would you like someone to say to the church, You're like the people from Sudan. God says things like this. Yeah. You're like the Muslims to me. Mm. Oh, you think God wouldn't say that? Yeah. You think... You're like the worshipers of the sun in Japan to me. Yeah. You think he doesn't? You're like the ones that worship philosophy, like the Buddhists. That's what you are to me. You think God wouldn't say that to a church? This is the kind of thing he said to them. You're like, yeah. you're like the Ethiopians to me. You're just like the Ethiopians. I think as much of the people of Ethiopia as I do you. That's the New Jerusalem Bible. I think as much of the people as of Ethiopia as I do of you, good news Bible, 
Aren't you people of Israel like the people of Cush to me? International Standard Version. Amplified Bible says, You, O oh degenerate children of Israel, are no more to me. Got to really catch <laughs> You're no more to me than these despised Cushites. Does sin affect God? Well, you tell me. Does it? Yes. Considering before you get too far away from the point you're making, how men nowadays they dumb down using the phrase sin to say it was a mistake. Mm. And I was considering that in the world, whenever somebody makes a mistake, they can fix it. They mm -hmm. can usually fix it. But um, when somebody sins, yeah. a man can't mm -hmm. fix it. That's right. right. Yeah. The Lord who forgives you. That's yeah. right. And if they don't go to the Lord, he won't. He won't do that. That's right. By saying they were the, like the children of Ethiopians, the Lord was saying they conducted themselves toward him just like people didn't know him. Oh, yeah, that's right. They had an Ethiopian manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like the Ethiopian eunuch uh -huh. yeah. who came to Jerusalem to worship. Then he says to them, <clears throat> Have I not brought you out of Egypt? Mm. And all, that is mentioned more a staggering number of times. I once took the time to count them, and it was it's in the hundreds where, where God refers to their deliverance from Egypt yeah, yeah. Wow. through the prophets. This single deliverance of God never did anything but that. If that's all he did, that single deliverance was enough to secure consistent obedience. That was enough, just that. The world had heard about that. Yeah, Balak, he heard about it. When Israel started coming his way, he wanted to do something, but we heard, we heard about this group here. When they got into Jericho, Rahab said, we've been shaking in our boots ever since we heard what God did to the Egyptians, how he brought you through the Red Sea. The world heard about this deliverance. But Israel didn't think anything at all about the impact of their conduct upon that report. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they, in other words, the world didn't marvel anymore about Israel. There was a time when, because of what God did to Israel, mm -hmm. the world was afraid. Yeah. Amen. The fear of God was fell upon them. Amen. But if there's anybody here that wants to affirm that the world's afraid of the church, well, let me assure you, that is emphatically not the case. That's right. yeah. The world is not afraid. Our world, our country is yeah. not afraid to pass laws against Christian expression. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's how afraid they are of the church. That's how weak the church is. Yeah. Weak and insipid. The people are not afraid to pass laws against it. It's a week. Yeah. Is this the people I delivered? Mm -hmm. This is what he's saying. Israel. Yeah. Didn't, I, didn't I bring you out of Egypt? Which There's no only one way you can explain getting out of Egypt in one night. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's that, that I did it. Yeah. How could you possibly explain how you were delivered from the power of darkness mm -hmm. and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son mm -hmm. apart from me? And if that's true, how come you're the way you are? Why are you the way you are? Didn't I bring you out of Egypt? Powerful, isn't it? Yeah, amen. The God had once heard the groaning of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Exodus 6, 5. Yeah. And he responded by delivering them. Now he's heard the moaning oh, <laughs> and the, seen the insolence of Israel. He's going to respond to that. So you thought, well, but that deliverance, that was unique. Well, he said, didn't I bring the Philistines out of Kaftor? Now, there's, there's no detailed record of this or of the next deliverance is mentioned, but evidently Amos knew about it, the people knew about it, that God had delivered the Philistines. You aren't the only ones I delivered. I delivered the Philistines, not the same way I did you. So don't think that deliverance itself is unique. 
And the Assyrians, I, I brought them from Kerr. So I say the record of this isn't in Scripture. But they knew what it, what it was. So there were some Syrians that in some way were delivered by God. Yeah. Special favor. Uh -huh. So you see, it's not really unique mm -hmm. to be delivered. Mm -hmm. There's people in the world that have been delivered from this, that, or the other. They haven't been delivered from sin. They've been delivered from this, that, or the other. Yeah. By God. Yeah. And uh, he's, he, so he reminded them. So, so the deliverance you have is a different kind of deliverance, and the response has to be a different kind of response. Yeah. Now let's reason for a moment on this, on this text. There's a potency here that uh, can be easily overlooked. More common deliverances should not be treated as unique ones. God sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Right? That's a common. Yeah. That should not be treated as though it was unique. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, when we first moved here, in all my accumulated life, I never heard so many thanks for the weather as we heard when we moved here. Every prayer we heard started out with thanking for the wonderful day. Every, every prayer, whether it was at a college or in a church, or every prayer we heard talked about common blessings as though they were unique blessings. Now, I'm not against thanking God for the weather, but if that's all you got to thank God for, you better be quiet and start doing some thinking. God doesn't intend for his people to be thanking him for the weather. At least not until they thanked him for the other things first. Let's, let's put it in its proper order. It would be, if these Ethiopians, if the Philistines and the Syrians had thanked God for deliverance, I'm not sure what God would have done, but... That was just a kind of a general blessing that God in his mercy did, but it wasn't equated with what God did to Israel. Yes, Brother Jason. The Lord is saying here, he's saying, I, I've worked in behalf of these other nations too, yes. but, I've, but I've worked in behalf of Israel in a, in a certain way. That's right. That means you especially ought to be serving me. Amen. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Mm -hmm. God, it. If, if it's true, if it's true mm -hmm. that there is common grace, mm -hmm. and if it's true that in a sense God, there is a sense in which God does show love to everyone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's true, mm -hmm. how much more that's do right. God's people yeah. owe God? Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. That's right on. Mm -hmm. Paul said he, he gives life and mm -hmm. breath and all things yeah. to everybody. That's these common graces. We give thanks for them, but that's not our primary. Yeah. Our thanks has to extend. I've been thinking about this too, as well as about our specific assembly. Now, you know, that's the only one I can really comment on because that's the only one I really am in. But, but I've seen and heard things here that I've never heard anyplace else. Now, because of that, God is going to expect a certain response from this assembly right. that is above average because I've heard above average things. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yes. This Amen. is, I don't want to just sit here and say, well, look at all, all the good things. We, we, there better be something going out. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fact that we've been given, that we have been forgiven demands that we live in a unique manner. Yeah. Amen. See, that's what God said, will say to them. I delivered you from Egypt that alone demanded that you live in a thankful yes. and godly manner. Yes, Just that I did that. Uh -huh. Well, he's done more than that yes. Yes. for those that are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And our lives are to be a thank offering. And when they're not, yes. God has a controversy with the land. Yes. yes. And the time from the Lord is um, 
when we're not maybe going through a trial at the time, um, if we're not giving thanks for specific things, so when it comes to a trial, it's going to be more difficult for us to find yeah. things to be yeah. thankful for. Yes. <laughs> yeah, your senses won't be exercised. Uh -huh. Yeah, to discern. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. I thought too, um, maybe th maybe there's an application here in our discussion that we've had on many occasions about God's love and the idea that God loves unconditionally or that God loves everyone the same, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a sense in which God has shown love and care for all the nations yes. of the world. Yes. But it, but it, but it isn't the same mm -hmm. by degree. There is a different degree yes, right. of Amen. God's love. You might say that yes. God loved God loved Israel as a man loves his wife. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a man now a man's love for his wife is not the same as his love for like a friend. Or at least right. it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a covenant right. love yes, yeah. right. Amen. There, that God had for His people, mm -hmm. yeah. which bound Him to Israel and it bound Israel to Him. And so any time Israel Israel is not. This is why God got so angry mm -hmm. with the people yes, that's of right. Israel, particularly. It's not recorded that he was angry with the Ethiopians. No, but he was. He was. Angry. It's just jealous love that God. Amen. That God had for uh, for Amen. Israel. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, there is such a thing as professing that they know God, but denying Him in works. Yeah. As tight as 115. Yes. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny that they live just as though yeah. there is no God or as though God hadn't done anything yeah. in their behalf. Mm -hmm. There's another matter uh, to be considered here. It's not right for us to glory in our doctrine any more than it was right for Israel to glory in the law. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can see this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are people who do by nature. Paul told the Romans, there are heathen people that by nature do what was in the law. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. There are people in the denominational world who by nature do the things that the Bible says ought to be done. Some of them surpass some of the people who say we are the one true church. There are people in these false churches that actually live better than they do. See, that applies to the kind of reason. That's the kind of reason that he's doing it. That's just an up-to-date kind of reasoning. He would be like to him to say to a large first church first first Christian church to say you don't mean any more to me than the Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. uh -huh. yeah. hmm? you don't mean any more to me than the Mormons uh -huh. well that sounds like sacrilege no what the sacrilege is to be the kind of people that don't mean any more to God than that yeah. See how, see how this applies to, uh, applies to us. If Israel was condemned for living in a manner that contradicted the law, professing Christians are condemned for living in a manner that contradicts the doctrine. Yeah, yeah. Alright, let's look at uh, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. <clears throat> I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. But God always says the whole truth. Yeah. Now Satan, he's extended himself to promote erroneous and false views of God. Mm -hmm. This happened in Israel, too. Mm -hmm. Happened in Israel. Amos said, there's going to be a captivity. False prophet says, there's not going to be a captivity. Yeah. Yeah. See? Paul's prophet would continue to tell him, everything's okay. I mean, look how prosperous we are. How can God be against us? We've got all the corns flowing in. And we've got plenty of resources and the rain is falling on the land. And... But God was against him. 
Now, the eyes of the Lord, that in itself was an interesting expression. That phrase, the eyes of the Lord, is mentioned 23 times, and the eye of the Lord is mentioned once. Scriptures also refer to the Lord seeing, and refer to the to his, his, quote, his eyes, unquote, uh, 17 times, and his eye three times. All of these things are what we call anthropomorphisms. They mean it's a human trait assigned to a non-human person <coughs> so that we can understand him. God, God talks about himself this way. He has seven eyes, he has ears, he has a hand, the feet, the legs. <laughs> well, he really doesn't have a body, he? Yeah. but he, he uses those terms so we can kind of grasp yeah. what he's like. He sees things discerningly. When God's Word says the eyes of the Lord are upon something, it means he's focused on it yeah. and he's going to do something about what he sees. Amen. God doesn't just look at things, you know. Ho hum, and go his way. When God feast, fixes his eyes on those in the plain of Shinar, he's going to do something about that. And when God looked at Israel, now he's going to do something about it. When God's word says the eyes of the Lord are upon something, he means it's focused and something's about to happen. Now he says the eyes of the Lord are upon. The sinful kingdom. The sinful kingdom. Other verses read the evil kingdom. Septuagint version said the kingdom of sinners. <laughs> Boy. Well, the sinful nature, it's in that Bible. The sinful nation of Israel. New Living Translation. Living Bible says to it upon Israel, that sinful nation, a kingdom of sinners, Jews the Bible says, the kingdom of sin, the Message Bible says, and the sinful kingdom of Israel, that is the ten tribes. Now there are, there are several things you can see in this, the sinful kingdom. <coughs> First, this isn't limited to Israel. <laughs> They're not the only sinful kingdom. The other one he's talking about here. This applies to any nation that appropriately is described as a, a sinful kingdom. It applies to all nations, as the psalmist said, that forget God. Yes. All nations that forget God will be turned into hell. That's the word of... Yes. Does it make any difference what the nation knew, uh -huh. how extensive their understanding was? So he says the sinful kingdom, he's a, it's a particular one he's talking about, but it applies to all sinful kingdoms. There's a category, there, this is a category of people that are said to forget God, and I mentioned the scriptures there. They forget God. They Pretty soon they live as though there was no, there was no God. Yeah. Uh -huh. They live as though God hadn't said anything to anybody. They live as though God didn't have any demands or prerequisites or any will that's to be followed. You know people that live like this. It's a sinful kingdom. Second, there is such a thing as an entire nation that by definition is sinful. <laughs> How's that? The entire nation. They do not seek God's counsel. They seek to justify themselves. Here's a word of God on the subject. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord, and they have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are gone away backward. Well, that's some description. They're, uh, they're, uh, they're loaded with iniquity. 
they produce an evildoer, the seed of evil, they produce evildoers. Give me a moment here. They are children that are corruptors. They defile everything. They defile everything. This is a nation now we're talking about. They defile everything they touch. They forsake the Lord, and they provoke the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, to anger, and they've gone backward. That's, that's a description of an evil nation or a sinful nation. Now, that sounds very much like our nation. Yes, it does. If so, it's a sinful nation. Third, there is such a thing as a nation in which sin is encouraged and freely practiced. There are nations that are in an environment in which sin can just be committed with apparent impunity and freely expressed. And there are some places a church ought to be a hard place to, in which to sin. But there are nations like that. There, it's easy to send them. There are cities like this. Las Vegas, New York, Hollywood. You know, and you go to these cities in New York, it's easy, it's easy to sin in them. You know, that kind of environment. New Orleans. New Orleans, that's right. See, there's a, when, I, when my job required me to travel a lot, I asked the Lord to help me and I could develop a sensitivity I come to some of these cities like New York. It was a it was a certain feeling I got when I was in New York. Mm -hmm. I had to throw up yeah. caution, cautionary walls, walls, and not be, not be loose, yeah. be very alert because I, I said this is a citadel mm -hmm. yes. of the devil. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sinful nation. Yeah. See, you get that from there. There are environments, even nations, where it's easier to sin, mm -hmm. and sin is less apt to be rebuked in those places. And what is God pledged to do to such a nation, a sinful nation? What is he pledged to do? I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Yes. Amen. He doesn't say, I'm going to convert it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, not what, <laughs> that's not what he says. Mm -hmm. If a nation isn't destroyed, it does have to be saved like Nineveh. Something has to happen there, if that's not the case. He's going to wipe it off the face of the earth. This is what God did with nations like the Amalekites. <laughs> Just cleanse the earth of them. Yeah. It's what happened to Rome. It's a thousand years. It was on top of the heap for a thousand years. They called it the eternal city. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just a kind of a resort you can go and see things in. You know, it's not a kingdom anymore. Yeah. What happened? God moved it off the stage. Yeah. Now it is true, and God was going to take Israel out of the land in the same way. Mm -hmm. It is true that God created the earth to be inhabited. That's Isaiah 45, 18. He created the world to be inhabited, but not by sinful nations. Yes. They're intruders. That sinful nations are to the world what terrors were to the field. Doesn't make any difference if they're tribal nations mm -hmm. or sophisticated empires. Mm -hmm. I know someone says those poor tribal nations. That, no, they're sinful nations. Yeah. Those tribal nations are sinful nations. Now we've got a gospel for them if they yeah. if they want the Lord. It's that's true. But they, you, you got to call them what they are. Yeah, amen. They're not just dark or misunderstanding it. Nations. That's, that's not it. They're sinful nations. That's what they are. Sinful yes. nations. Mm -hmm. And the sophisticated ones like Europe and places like this, they're sinful nations yes. also. God's going to utterly destroy them. The judgments of which the Lord speaks is against the nation, generation of Israel, a generation of Israel versus the whole of it. As long as the, as the world stands, he will never totally remove the house of Jacob. I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. That's a, that's a word. Yes. Amen. Yeah, the, 
the reason for that is not because of Jacob. <laughs> it's, it's because of God. That's right. God, God's not going to remove. He's not going to remove them because He made a promise. That's yeah. right. That's to right. Abraham. Mm -hmm. So, any see anything that traces itself back to Adam is doomed. Amen. Whereas the nation that God establishes oh, yeah. will will endure. It will endure. Whether it's Israel or whether it's the whole people of God and in the end will be saved. For his oath's sake. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But that's that's grace though. That's Amen. right. That's what grace is. It, Israel was gonna continue not because they were so good. They were gonna continue in spite of themselves. Amen. Yeah. Only because of the only because of God's grace and his and his purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have here too the the sure mercies of David at work. Uh -huh. That's right. That's going to be an evil here, by the way. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, Ezekiel is the one who uses this phrase more than any other prophets. For my name's sake. For my name's uh -huh. sake. That's right. Not for your sake. For That's my right. name's That's sake. That's right. Yeah. And then in sparing the nation, he'll spare a remnant. That's right. Mm -hmm. Cool. He elaborates, for lo, I will command. Yes. Sorry, one, one other time. Go ahead. Uh, now, th it does remain, God has dealt with nations. Yeah. Paul mm -hmm. said that in Athens. Oh, yes. So yes. God has arranged the nations. He put yes. nations yes. where he wanted them so uh -huh. that they could seek God. See, uh -huh. but, but Paul Paul didn't say there that they do. Uh -huh. That's right. He said... He said that that was God's design. Yeah. God's design was to arrange the nation in such a way that they would seek God, but actually they they didn't. They, they, didn't. Mm -hmm. they, they even the best like the Athenians ended up worshiping idols. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Whenever you mentioned earlier how that God had made some kind of uh, deliverance mm -hmm. to Kephtor, the Kephtorian, and the Syrians. And then they were expelled from that land later. Mm. Whenever, whenever God delivered them, they didn't glorify God. Uh huh. They were unworthy of the land. Yeah. That's right. God was going to fill His land with His people. Uh -huh. Expelled him. And we we can say, but for the grace of God, mm -hmm. go I. Amen. That's right. If it, if it exactly. weren't for God's grace, uh -huh. we'd all be worshiping idols too. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. so none of us should none of us should think somehow we're morally superior. That's right. To other people, it's uh -huh. only the grace of God. Yeah. That's right. That he causes us to be born again and raise us up from deadness uh -huh. and sin. See, that's that's the only way we can trace back. We, the only reason we're any different. Uh huh. That's the reason that led him to say, "Are you not as the Ethiopians?" Yeah, that's right. And, yeah, that's right. That's why he said that because they didn't because. Their response yes. was not satisfactory. That's right. To say that's a very mild way of saying it. Didn't Jesus say, say not unto yourselves, we have Abraham as that's our father. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. John the Baptist said that the axe is laid at the root uh -huh. of the trees. Yeah. Now God speaks, Lo, I will command, I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Well, this is a judgment upon a generation of Israel, which are a pretty big-sized generation. I, I'm going to command. Now, in the sense that this word is used here, what God commands takes place. This isn't like one of the Ten Commandments. It, it, this, isn't, this isn't the kind of command this is. Here's the kind of command it is. That it mentions as it is written, for he spake and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. That's speaking of the creation of the world. This is a command that God says it and it happens. Unfortunately, this isn't how it happened with the moral with the moral code. He didn't command it and it came to pass. See? But this this is a different command here. The psalmist prayed, Thou art my king, O God, command deliverances. Ooh, that's a good thought, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. See, God can command that you be delivered, and Satan's got to let you go. Yeah. Got to command deliverances, and the powers of darkness have to let you go. That's the kind of command we're talking about here. Amen. Again, this kind of commandment is referenced in the 105th Psalm. 
It is said of the heavens, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. See, that's the kind of command now we're, we're talking about. Again, Jeremiah said, in Lamentations 2.17, the Lord hath done that which he had devised. He hath fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down and hath not pitied. He hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thine adversaries. That's why the enemies triumphed yeah. over Israel. He commanded. Here, he commanded is equivalent to, I will cause. That phrase is mentioned in Scripture. Or I will make. So what are you going to command, Lord? What, what, are you, what, are you, what, are you going to, what are you going to make happen? What are you going to cause to happen? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to sift the house of Israel among all nations. <clears throat> I'm going to command that to, to happen. Some other versions read, I will... I will shake the house of Israel among all nations as grain shaken in a sieve. I will have Israel moved about among all nations as grain is moved about by the shaking of a tray. The Amplified Bible says, I'll cause it to move to and fro as grain is sifted in a sieve. God would purify his people by moving among the nations. As they moved among the nations, some of them would adapt to the nation. Uh -huh. yeah. they'd, be, they'd be sifted out. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. That, that trial, yeah. men like Daniel and the, his three associates, they wouldn't be sifted out. Yes, that's right. They'd, they wouldn't fall to the ground. Uh -huh. But there were a lot of people mm -hmm. sifted out. Where they were would discover who the impure of heart was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would discover who the impenitent were. Uh, yes. This captivity would discover. Yeah. Amen. Some people in the captivity, they say, we have sinned. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. Other people would gnaw their tongue, mm -hmm. blaspheme God. Those who were sifted out would be absorbed by the heathen cultures. They'd adopt their gods, they'd adopt uh -huh. their manners. They become like the nations they were in. They'd be made like Achan was when he entered Jericho. See, Achan got in the environment of Jericho and it brought out. <laughs> he adapted to the environment. Uh -huh. yes. huh? mm -hmm. Now you know why God, why God did this. But here he says, now listen, not the, not the least grain will fall to the ground. None of the remnant is going to be lost by this sifting. In all this sifting and exposure to the wicked, the real grain, real grain won't be sifted out. They would remain like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah in Babylon. The term, the least grain, that's equivalent to remnant. Yeah. That's, that's the same, same thing as remnant. <clears throat> and a remnant is not the full corn in the ear. The remnant, they're not like a super strong people. Mm -hmm. Understand that. that mm -hmm. They're kept by the power of God. But they, you can't explain for their reservation, uh -huh. preservation, except by their reservation. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. God will command the removal of the old leaven. See, how will he do it? He'll send them out among the heathen. They'll be scattered out there. Those that have the real thing, it'll surface yes. while they're out there. They, they'll even choose lions over the king's will yeah, right. or a furnace. God will command, in other words, the removal of the old leaven. <laughs> now, there's a, quite a line of reasoning here. I, I trust that you can, uh, you can see it. The distinction of God's people will be more, the real people will be more apparent in these heathen nations. Mm -hmm. Israel was in such a dilemma that the, that the distinction of the godly couldn't, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
wasn't easily, there was so much hypocrisy and pretension that it was hard to distinguish. It's like today. Mm -hmm. yes. It's easy to say, I'm a Christian. Yeah. I believe in Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, mm -hmm. it's easy to go through all of that. But there's a sifting going on yes, where amen. pretty soon people can't do that anymore. Yeah. Some people can't do that anymore. Yes. See, there are, uh, there are some that survive this sifting like Ezra, <coughs> Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, Mordecai, and Esther. They survived the sifting. Ezra listed 42,360 men with 7,337 servants and 200 singing men and women that survived the sifting of Babylon. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, there was a lot more than that went in. There were a lot more than that went in. But these were some of the remnants. They, they weren't sifted out. Yeah. About that. At the end of the seven years, that, that, was, that was, was it. Mm -hmm. They were some of the least grain that didn't fall to the ground. I now wanted. I didn't want to leave this without drawing a parallel here of what I call staggering exactness that can be seen in the church. It was not long in early history until defilement began to enter the church. Within three or four centuries, the enemy had come in like a flood. Just within three or four centuries. And spiritual corruption was rampant in the church. Eventually, the church was scattered like the people in the plain of Shinar. We call it denominationalism or sectarianism. There were all these different religious nations, so to speak. Religion, religious segments, but there's a sifting going on in all this. The purpose of the scattering was to sift, just as it was with Israel, to rid the church of its contaminants. Some picked up on the outside culture and adapted to the outside culture. Others endured hardships and trial that are associated with sifting and didn't fall to the ground. Some people, while they were out there, found the pearl of great price yes, and found a treasure in a field. <laughs> Some people discovered it out there. Some people decided to buy the truth and sell it not. Now, as for the children of Judah, when they went to Babylon, mm -hmm. Babylon was not as impressive to them as it was to Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, uh, you see this great Babylon, see, they, were, they weren't as impressed yeah, right. as he was. Mm -hmm. For the children of Israel, the kingdoms of Assyria and other places they were scattered weren't quite as illustrious as the citizens of those places thought. They were sifted, but the remnant wasn't sifted out. All right, now what of, what of those of us, and there's an innumerable company apart from us, that have been sifted in strange religious environments? How is it that we survived? How is it that others, kindred spirits, have survived? Why weren't they carried away with that religious environment and become irrecoverable? It's because God <coughs> commanded the sifting. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. It is God that said the least grain's not going to fall to the ground. So yeah. you call it when the day dawned or the day star rose in your heart. That's what you, you call it when your eyes were enlightened. God says you survived the sifted. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, everybody has a right to shout and sing because yeah. of what, because we survived a sifting, and there's the sifting's not done. Yeah. The sifting's not done yet. 
Those who live by faith and walk in the Spirit will survive the sifting. Yes, amen. It may take a while yeah. for things kind of fall together, but uh -huh. eventually that will happen. Yes. Well, I've yeah. seen it happen in a great number of you. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. All of a sudden, you dipped your rod in the honey and your eyes got in light. And you said, whew. Amen. It, what you found was there all along. Yeah, that's right. But see, during the sifting, you, <laughs> you discovered it. So I gave you this piece of good news. Not the least grain yeah. will fall to the ground. And if that was true of Jacob, <laughs> what about of those that are in Christ and have been joined to the Lord? It's much more true of them. Amen. And if you have a word you'd like to ask, Sister Barb. A couple of things that I was kind of considering because of the Lord's uh, language here of a sieve, the sifting in a sieve, mm -hmm. that there's a couple of actions that would take place in that. Um, first of all, the items that are inside the sieve that are being... Um, sifted, uh, bump against each other. You think the rough edges are kind of knocked <laughs> off and they're able to fall through the sieve and be, be purged away from that. Mm -hmm. So it's purification. Um, but also, you think about what's left in the sieve that didn't fall through was the things that had more substance. Yeah. Right. They were more substantive than the rest that mm -hmm. were allowed to fall through. And so these mm -hmm. things in parallel to the people of the Lord that we're talking about being preserved and the remnant um, the Lord has given his people, we talked about this, the Lord has given his yeah. people much more. Mm -hmm. And so then whenever we have this time of sifting come, if we're faithful and holding to what he's given us, that substance that he's given us, then we we will be preserved as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now the sieve is adapted for the seed. The holes are, yes. are too small for the seed to be. Who was it? Just Natasha. Yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for this last point that you made about the least grain not <laughs> being lost. When you consider, if the Lord has delivered you, mm. and you consider that, it yeah. increases your faith, and yeah. it causes for your praise to be greater unto the Lord that he saved you mm. from an environment that would eventually condemn you. So I'm, I'm thankful Amen. that you brought that that point out. Yeah, that was very Amen. good. Amen. Yes. Everybody Amen. in Christ has a testimony. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Blair. It seems like the natural man has a has a prerogative of thinking very well of itself. Yes. So when it when it reads uh, things like uh, "Woe unto you." Then, mm. That, that's not for me. Yeah. But then when they read things like, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yeah. And they assume that's, that's yeah. for me. Yeah, that's so right. So you know, people even uh, take that text uh, from the uh, Chronicles, I believe it was, if the people, if my people called by my name will humble themselves <laughs> about, well, that's talking about America. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> because there's a lot of these assumptions. Yeah. I think there's... Uh, reason why the Lord has provided uh, so such a diversity of records. You have in, examples in the scripture. you got people that, that he called, like Israel, all this investment in Israel, and it didn't change it. Some of them were rejected. But then on the other hand, the Gentiles, he answered them before they called. Before they called. Yes. So it, 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 the, it's, like the, it's like the whole record is, de, is designed to, to bring sober thinking and, and humility. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sister. Um, I was thinking about this matter of sin and this sinful kingdom, and people underestimate sin. Um, the church now, or the professed church, has allowed sin to be in, so that this kind of environment has been created where people are more um, they're more comfortable sinning. So uh, that's why it's so important in, in the environment that you're in, the religious environment that mm -hmm. you're in, to, to, to be on the alert. If there's anything that could could contaminate, to go mm -hmm. ahead and handle that situation right then. Yeah. So that, that there's not an um, environment that's created that, it, that makes it comfortable to sin. Because yeah. it mm. spreads if you allow that. Mm. Amen. Yes. Yeah, it seems to be a tremendous amount of uh, pressure right now in our own cultural context. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on 
on believers and on the church at large to compromise, to conform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm -hmm. so we, we should view that as God doing some kind of sifting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's exactly Amen. right. Very Amen. good. Amen. Mm -hmm. That changes a person's whole view of things. Yeah. You say this is a sifting. This is a, a point of discovery. would say to a lot of different people, say not unto yourself, I serve Jesus. Because he would say, if you did, then you wouldn't be serving yeah. yourself in the world. Same thing he said to them. They were legitimate Jews. They really were yeah. descendants from Abraham. Yeah. But he said, you don't do the work of Abraham. Yeah. So see, there, there's more than being a believer than just saying, I'm a believer. Yeah. There, there is going to be some fruit that proves that. There's this jarring question. Yeah. Why do you call me Lord, yes. Lord, and do not what I say? Yes. Amen. Now, what is the what is a satisfactory answer to that question? Mm -hmm. See? Yeah, even the Apostle Paul pointed out not all who are of Israel are, are Israel. Israel. Yes. yes, Amen. There's an Israel within the Israel. Yes, and there's a church within the church. <laughs> Amen. Same, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, no, nobody that's serious would say I've got it all perfected. You know, they're saying, I've done it all now. now. I can just go on. No, this is a, a growth process, but you are engaged in growing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're still in the sin, you're safe. Yeah, amen. <laughs> I was reminded, too, about um, Jesus telling Peter toward the end of his time in the earth, Satan desired to no, sift him in the yes. language here. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Jesus told him, right. I prayed for you. Amen. So we still have that same intercessor. Yeah. In amen. Mm. That your faith fail not. Yes. Your faith will keep you in the sin. Amen. Yeah. All right, very good. Mm. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your effective commands. We thank you that you, you command deliverances. We recognize and give thanks for it, Lord, that you commanded our deliverance. We're grateful for it. And we pledge to give our lives to you, Father. We ask for your continued blessing through the Holy Spirit that will empower us to do precisely that. In Jesus' name, amen.